So welcome back to another video. I'll be your host Hans. I have a little bit of history and recap for you. So back in 2016 I think I received a video back from Voltor. We discussed how to get a better picture and reduce all the loud sounds. I made a composite mood board of drawing I found online, sent it to him, made a video about it on how to install it. Put the thing back together and show you what it looks like uh, uh, on the TV. It's it's better than the RF signal and I, I it's just uh, I, I don't have to go look for a channel or whatever. Then I was thinking this, how do I get binaries into the computer? Well I started looking at tools to help get the binaries into the machine. There was several cards built by several people, none which were currently on the market. The RAM card seemed easy to build with off-the-shelf components. So the RAM card is like, it has a uh, EPROM, which is like the bootloader. And then you can use serial cable to send it over to the RAM card, which is connected to the console. And your data will be then be stored in the RAM chip. So, and then you flip a switch and you can run the program. Flip the switch. Fun Software had been working on porting Spaceman Splarf to Videopack. The coder used the emulator but had to use a console to verify. The O2EM emulator is very buggy also. So, so I want to do an SD card. So I've seen I have many SD card project videos. So in my previous videos I explored how to send data between, between the microcontroller and the video pack. So I used Arduino libraries to easily read data of an SD card and into the static RAM IC. So you may recognize the C64FC card made by Stian Serling. A jump plug. So the SD card project is snag when I needed to have a both ROM loader, or it's boot loader anyway, and my own room image on the RAM card. That didn't work out, so I was thinking, what about Stian's C64 FC USB flash card? His dream with the C64 USB flash card was that it could be console universal. For me, I find it useful as a sort of AVR dude for the video pack. Like AVR dude is for the Atmel microcontrollers. I can upload images on the fly via command line, bake it into a make file. So I ha that is what this video is about. Let's make it a USB flash thing. So I'm back on this project again and uh, <laughs> I think I had the wrong crystal at 16 megahertz instead of 12 so I borrowed that from his card. And then I also figured out I have uh, I have a problem with the USB. I can't get USB. This one works well with my uh, Ubuntu laptop, and then um, it didn't work so well for my card. So I started measuring uh, voltages on the data lines, and he had two and a half volt on both data lines, and I had three and something else. Now I, I think I figured out why I had zero on one of them. <laughs> anyway, so. Anyway, I, I borrowed his um, sender diodes also, but I don't think that's the thing now because now I see I'm missing. Um, <laughs> I have a break in the signal from. Actually, it's possible to take this one off. <laughs> so it's really easy to uh, probe in here. And uh, yeah, basically go on with it and um, find where the signal stops. So. Seems to have stopped here, so I'll be right back. I don't know how well this camera picks up uh, macro stuff, but you can see there where it says D1, which runs down to the USB connector. There's a break there because I used the snips. <laughs> Slid this one under the connector. And when I did so, you can see I scratched here, <laughs> so I made a little break. Yeah, stupid. Anyway, we'll fix that, be right back, see if it works. 
So to repair my mistake, I think I will just scratch off some uh, solder mask, lay a thin wire, the solder braid thing here. So let's see if there's still connection. Yep. Okay, new connector, old connector. <laughs> so I put the installation on the connector, not the board. So it was easier that way. So you can see, I actually needed insulation there. Yeah. All right. Let's try plugging it in. Mm. So because I was waiting for that uh, LED to flash, so but it didn't. But I uh, have at my Ubuntu machine. <clears throat> so let's see what we can do. Let's see. Let's try this. Let's see. Okay, didn't find the board. Okay, so I hooked up the USB ASP. There, there. That seems to work just fine. And we, we get a little flash. So let's see if we can get a flash if we now power it from a USB. Or we can do use the program here. Not the bootloader, but the uh, RAM size. RAM size. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, it worked. It, it yeah, it fucking worked. <laughs> yeah, because you don't get the RAM size if it doesn't work. So if we now put it into bootloader mode, I'm not sure if that works because I'm not sure if I have actually put the bootloader on it. So. Yeah, you get an error, but it still seems to do the thing. So, if we now do a sudo make flash, it should uh, recognize this as if it was this. Kind of cool, is that? So, let's try that. Didn't work. Okay, so I haven't made a bootloader for that. So let's maybe I should try this. Put a bootloader on it first. So the way you do that is you have to go into the bootloader folder. CD U USB ASP. Then you do make fuse. I think is first. But first, I need to connect the uh, programmer. So hold on. Um, camera was full because I forgot that I have to actually delete the. I had to actually delete the trash folder. <laughs> the flash card. Oh well. Anyway, it's working again. I can't get it to flash uh, the, from the bootloader, but I can run the command 64. So that's fine. So I'm happy to do that. So when I press reset now, you can see flash, it responds, I can dump, dump memory. Look. And it's flashing at the same time. There you go. Stop. And then, uh, is there other things you can do? Just to remove everything. You have seen me do this before. Now, I can't get this uh, updater to work. <coughs> I mean, to update this card. But I mean, if this card works fine, don't really need updates on it, so it's okay. Uh, I can figure that out. Maybe it's just my tools that doesn't work. I don't remember what I filmed before the camera was full. And it didn't work. So try to figure out what was wrong. So I measured everything here. Couldn't find uh, anything. Everything was uh, as it was where it was supposed to be. But I noticed there might be like a bridge on A12, which is around here. So I think you can't really see it, but, but when I measure it, I can see that there is a bridge. So yeah, I have a microscope. So I'll show you, but I don't think it's good enough to find the fault. So if you have a suggestion for USB microscope, which is better, that will be great.
Right, so the fault is here, there's a bridge here, so it's right under that U, so you look at my microscope. Well, kind of you can see something here, but not here, so why is that? I do measure a fault here, but maybe it's this thing here, so a better microscope would have done it. I think maybe you can see, there you can see it actually, there's a bridge going on there. Or is it? It's not so easy. So I can also try try adjusting lighting. Yeah. But anyway, a better microscope would have found that much easier, I think. So as you can see, um, this is the best I can get from my microscope. So. And this other picture is uh, like when I have it at a working distance. The first one was when I'm holding it straight over. So, like this. And then I mean straight over. So, what I'm gonna do now, you can sort of see in the picture that there are green, 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 and then it's not so green, and then there's green, green in between the pins. So, kind of you can make it out. But what I'm gonna try now is uh, some uh, nail polish remover so yeah it, it's got a acetone or yeah acetone this one actually got real acetone some of them got uh, the synthetic one okay so as you can see it's actually a bit easier to see now so you can see more in there but i think maybe <laughs> the fault is longer inside and there actually these three pins are solder together so this is 5 volt this is a13 and a no a12 and a11 i think i have to check that ah, a12 and a11 that is so well okay and this is after using solder wick and you can already see there it's, uh, the bridge is gone sorry i can film that uh, I need a better setup for that. Okay, so I'm clearing memory, so I'm gonna show you, I think I know what's wrong here. Uh, it will be very evident when I show you. Let me bring up the hex editor. And then reset files, zeros, here you go. So, I have a file 16k, which is the same size as a ship. If I only write these first bytes and nothing the other ones so now it's not 16k anymore it's just like 16 bytes or something so send that there you go let's check what's the content right look now we got it there because we only wrote here then it should be zeros all the way, but it isn't. Look, it repeats. So we have mirroring. There's something wrong with A13. I think I know what it is, but it's too late. And, uh... Okay, so this is the drawing of my board. And uh, I've compared it to Stian's uh, drawing of his board. And the thing with the A13 is that it's not on his schematic. But when I look in the code, a13 is actually next to A12, but in the schematics it says uh, just Moosey, so I think it's just shared with Moosey, which is perfectly fine. Um, but I didn't find it, probably I took a very quick decision. This is just this board, if you notice, it is auto routed. You can see it's auto-routed because, like, see around the pins there? 
does uh, really stupid things like uh, going very close to the pins when it doesn't have to do that. Anyway, <laughs> so it was just a quick uh, mashup just to get uh, uh, this thing to spread out to any connector. So this is the moment of truth. So let's see. 16k chip. Look, we've fixed it. So that's great. Now should set 44C3 which is like a jump to select game and it repeats at, but not at 3400 hex but it does in my hex file so something is weird there well maybe I sent the wrong file here uh, .bak yeah hold on yep yep Yep, look, I got so excited I turned off the video. <laughs> well, um, yeah, that was it. I was sending the uh, bin file, not the b bay, the BWAC file. <laughs> so now we got all the way up to 127, which I think is, if I dump the memory now, I should see data. So why is it so important to have data up near 16K when the game is like, 2k or 4k well it's all about memory mapping we don't have memory mapping on this thing we could do it uh, but the way I've done it is actually just uh, copy all the contents all over the chip uh, to mirror it instead so so therefore uh, if it decides to pick uh, out data up in the high high area will do that so let's see you can do 3000 there yeah there you can see data so let's see if we can start the game <laughs> let's go press one nothing happens oh shit yeah we probably need to reset first yep yep oui, oui. it's uh, working 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 I'm really happy so now we have actually the VD pack is now using this chip as a room, which is actually a dual port RAM. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Very interesting. The VD pack, this is a cartridge port, it doesn't have a reset. Like Commodore and uh, other system consoles, they do have reset. So we have reset there, which so I was thinking maybe just hooking up a wire from here up to the cartridge. And maybe having it down here somewhere, <laughs> just so we get it in access, a little socket here, so I can just hook it up here whenever I need it. So if this is going to be for developing, it would be really nice to <laughs> be able to reset it on the fly, like from the command line of the computer. So these are the banking pins. So this will be then A12 and A13. Pretty sure of that because. This is A11, which is the highest address line. Yes, these are paging and these are uh, banking. And from uh, experience, I know that uh, these are usually high. So that means uh, the upper bank is usually the first one it reads. Yeah, so when you have a cartridge, those wires are usually not connected. And they are connected in a, in a weird way. <laughs> Also, because they just skip A10, I think, which is really weird. But that makes it more efficient to have a 2K chip in a uh, in a 4K area where the first K is uh, not available. So, so, so it, it gets a bit broken, but it saves money. So <laughs> I talked about that in another video, by the way, which you should look at if you're interested. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Really happy that this works. I'll probably make another video about it when I make a proper board for it, like this one, a proper connector and everything. Then we have to look at the uh, other stuff needs to be done. So thank you very much for watching.